All right, guys, welcome back to the Philadelphia Union podcast here on my channel. My name's Zero. Let's get it going. Thank you to, for all those that have been have listened to any of these podcasts in the past. But how, let's we got to talk about the CONCACAF Champions League, guys. Um, Union winning their first leg of their quarterfinal. Um, actually, got a typo here going. Hang on, let me fix this typo. Um, this is this is not good. Here I am. Anyways, there we go. I have a I have a typo in the scrolling on the bottom, of course. But there we go. Anyways, guys, it's fixed. Um, so they won their first leg against the Atlanta United. They go down to ATO. And you're thinking, well, maybe we can get out of there with with a tie, you know, maybe be down by just a goal going into the second leg, you know, that'd be that'd be okay. Nah, not for the Union. They go there, they went three nothing. Union went three nothing in game one of this uh, two leg series on you know, aggregate. Um, I was just I couldn't believe what was going on. I was clapping, I was screaming, I was so happy the way they they freaking played this game in the second half. Casper Shaboko scores two goals. Uh, Anthony Fontana comes off the bench and scores one as well, which was set up by Shabilko, and he was very clinical with his chances there. Um, and the Union just just held on and it went three. I mean, three nothing. They 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 shocked Atlanta. They shocked the fans. They shocked the league. Um, and they are in the complete driver's seat going in the second leg in at Philadelphia, uh, as you guys can see in the bottom there. The second uh, leg is going to be on uh, May fourth at Subaru Park. And uh, the Union are just in complete control. Atlanta have to go to Philadelphia and score at least three goals and not concede any, you know. So it's it's going to be tough for Atlanta to try and come back from that. I have no doubt Philly's going to see this out. There's there's just no way they're going to blow a 3-0 lead at home. Um, the Champions League, you know, the way the team defends, uh, and the way Jim Curtin sets things up, there's just no way. We, we you know... We might end up, you know, scoring a few more goals ourselves, but you know, even if we do lose the match, say like two to one or something, you know, we're good. So, so we're gonna get into that semifinal, which is crazy for our first trip to the Champions League to be doing this well. Is just insane. We're we're opening eyes, not just in MLS, but you know, around the world. Really, there's people coming in, watching, seeing the way we're performing, and it's just been it's just been a lot of fun, guys. You know. It's really, really good for this team to keep growing and keep, you know, I don't know, just keep putting a good name out there for themselves and for the organization. Um, so I'm going to talk more about, there's a lot of things you can go over in this game. You know, early on, first half, I think it was like five minutes in, freaking Jose Martinez gets yellow carded, which it wasn't even a yellow card challenge, but the referee gave him a yellow card anyways. That was very annoying. And you're thinking, oh gosh, now... He's gonna get sent off at some point. That's what you know. That's what everybody was thinking. Um, but to credit Jose Martinez, he kept his cool pretty good the rest of the match. He did have to get held back at one point by Glessness as he was getting into it with an Atlanta player. I don't remember who it was. Um, it was later in the game. But other than that, you know, he didn't do any too many crazy fouls or anything to put himself in jeopardy. So, but either way, Jose Martinez, this is a big thing. He is suspended for leg two. Because uh, his yellow card accumulation, so he will not be there in Philly, being able to to play. So uh, that's that's a big that's a big shoes to fill. He does such a good job in front of that back line, shutting so many things down, tracking players, you know, like Joseph Martinez or whoever, or Moreno, uh, Barco, all those guys that Atlanta has, and just he's one of the best defensive midfielders in MLS and there's no doubt about that his range of passing is really good you know he's not just one of those players who's going to win the tackle and that's that he wins the tackle and he sprays a ball and he will keep the team moving which is very important he will he's very good holding on the ball keeping possession um, he's not just a one-trick pony who's just going to win the ball there's a lot of those players around the world who are really tough yeah they're, they're you know they'll win the ball back but then they're not very good on the ball and they'll just kind of give it away or you know but you know he's he does he's good at both things and he's very smart about his defensive positioning and his energy. So we're gonna miss that no doubt. Uh, I don't know who's gonna start there in that position. I'm gonna guess he's gonna put Fontana in there, move him further forward, 
uh, kind of have Flack kind of sit in that spot maybe with Bedoya and have Montero and I don't know uh, I guess Fontana and Bedoya kind of like roam on the sides a little bit they'll probably be interchanging between all those guys but I expect Fontana to start in the second leg uh, let's talk about Fontana for a second the poor kid can't catch a break He's coming in this season expecting to be the guy, you know, to start you know, almost every match. And here he is. He can't even start now, you know. All the guy does is score goals, and he keeps coming off the bench, you know. I feel bad for him. He's got two goals now in the Champions League. He has been starting Champions League matches. He didn't start this game. But he didn't start our last MLS game either, you know, that we lost to Miami 2-1. to one. Uh, It's just unfortunate for him, you know. He should be starting every game, but he's... But you look at the players that we do have over him, Martinez, Bedoya, Montero, and Flock. Flock's come in and done an amazing job. Leon Flock, he has been incredible. His work ethic is bar second to none. The way he works off the ball defensively is just it impresses me so much. Our midfield will work as hard as any midfield in the entire world, guys. You're not going to find a midfield in the world in any league that works harder than ours. Between Bedoya, Martinez, Montero, and Flock, their defensive work rate is insane. The way I see them running around. If it's not one guy, it's the other guy. If it's not if it's not all of them, you know, they're all running around there. Bedoya covers so much ground. You know, Martinez does. Flock, he's been outstanding. I saw one person comment on the Union... I think it was on Facebook or something, saying how, oh, I'm not impressed with uh, Leon Flock, you know, he's not been, I'm not, I don't know what they see in him or whatever, I'm just like, really, like, are you even watching the games, do you even know what you're talking about, because, like, how can you say that about Leon Flock, he's been literally one of our best players so far this season, he's been running around off the ball, breaking up so many things, he's won so many challenges, and he's good at keeping the ball as well. Yeah, I think some people expected him to be Brendan Aronson because here he is, a young American midfielder coming in, you know, 20 years old. Oh, it must be the Aronson replacement. No, Leon Flock's not an offensive player. He's more of a he's more of a Bedoya type guy. He does the little things, keeps the team moving, but his energy level is insane, and the guy just flat out balls when he's out there. He's just <laughs> he allows players like Montero and Bedoya to go forward more because he can help cover with Mar- between him and Martinez. They cover so much ground defending. That's why our defense is so freaking good this season. It's so good. We've been susceptible to crosses with what uh, Miami did to us. We need to get better defending crosses and set pieces. There's no doubt about that. We were good in this leg against Atlanta. You know, Glessness and Elliott, um, you know, those are two huge guys we shouldn't be getting beat on crosses between those two. And then you got guys like Shobilko or Corey Burke coming back to defend as well. But fantastic. You know, with uh, that midfield. Leon Flock, I mean, I don't give him Flock because he's he's really good, guys. I, I'm sure I'm not in the minority that think Leon Flock has been a great signing so far for the Union. I think he's been tremendous, and I'm pretty sure most Union fans would agree with that. Um, so, in this game, though, Atlanta really blitzed us in the first half at spells. They didn't dominate the first half like everyone was saying. Like the announcers were saying, oh, it's all Atlanta, all Atlanta. Stuart Holden and uh, John Strong, or I think it was, they were just like, oh, Atlanta just completely dominating this half. You know, Union sitting back. I mean, yeah, the Union were getting blitzed in the first half, but they also created some dangerous crosses and had some corner kicks of their own in the first half. It wasn't like they didn't see the other side of the field. They weren't peppering the goal like Atlanta was, but it's not like Atlanta were just completely dominating. Um, It wasn't a good first half for the Union, but they weathered it, and the reason why was Andre Blake was just a complete... He was freaking brick wall in there. I mean, he made several outstanding saves in the first half. If it wasn't for Blake, the Union would not have won this this game. There's no way. If we had a lesser keeper in there, um, the Union probably would have gone down 1 or 2 nil, and this would have been a different story you've been talking about. Maybe an Atlanta United 3 nothing victory because the Union could have folded after that. You know, I guess the Union went down 1 or 2 nil. I don't think they would have come back and scored some goals in this game. It's just... 
I, it's just not in their nature, it seems like, to do that. Not not on the road, anyways. I think they would have found it very tough to get to get goals. But Andre Blake, you know, you can give the man of the match all you want to Shobilko, but I think Blake's still the man of the match. If it wasn't, he was so important, his saves, um, point-blank saves on Atlanta players time and time again uh, to just keep them out and frustrate them, get into the halftime locker room, nil-nil. You know, we Corey Burke started in the first half. He wouldn't. He wasn't good. He is coming back from injuries and hasn't seen a ton of playing time since he's come back into into the team. You know, he's still getting his his feet wet, so to speak. You know, he was pretty dreadful in that first half. So credit Jim Curtin. He makes the change. Sergio Santos on at halftime. Curtin realizes that. He says, "I'm not going to wait till the 60th minute, the 65th minute, the 70th minute to take out Corey Burke." I'm going to put it in Santos now because I see there's an issue here. We need to change things because they're blitzing us. We need to go at them more. So he brings in Sergio Santos, and that really helps change things. Santos making smart runs off the ball, getting involved, getting under the team's skin, getting under the fans' skin, although I don't know why they were booing Santos when he was down with blood dripping from his head. Yeah, he got he got elbowed in the, in the head. And he went down and was bleeding. The fans are like booing and whistling. I'm like, really? You're going to boo a guy that's down bleeding from his head? That's just, that's that's a no-no. Like when, when, when Eric Torres went down later in the half with a bleeding head too, he got his head cracked open a little bit. Um, I wasn't yelling at my TV screen, oh, get up or boo. I was actually just hoping he was okay. You know, I didn't, I don't want to see players go down injured from either side. So for the fans to be booing and whistling Santos, you don't have to like the guy. But don't boo him when he's down bleeding. That's just harsh. That's that's classless. That is classless from the United Atlanta United fans that were doing that. I don't care. I just I, I think that's that's bad. That's a bad look to boo a guy who's down bleeding from his head. That could have been you know a more serious injury. The guy clearly was bleeding from near his eye. <laughs> you know, it's not like he's faking it. I mean, come on. Have some more class than that, Atlanta United. You can boo him when he's on the ball. I don't care about that. But don't boo him when he's down injured. You know. Anyways. Um, so, yeah, he changes things up, brings on Santos in the second half. The Union start playing a little bit more in the second half. You know, they start balling a bit. They get forward. They start getting on the counterattack. Then, you know, Shobilko has this really good chance in all alone. And Guzan makes, makes a save. And then it deflects out for a corner, and you're like, oh, that was such a good chance. It was a great chance. We should have scored there. Shobilko's got to score there. Um, and to make it one nothing, you know, you don't, you didn't think you were going to get another chance like that. But then just a few moments later, a cross comes across, um, comes across the, uh, the, the six-yard box all the way to the far post. And who's sitting there ready to tap in? And it's Casper, the friendly striker. After just missing a golden opportunity, taps it in for a 1-0 Union lead. And we're in dreamland there, 1-0 on the road. And, you know, you're just thinking, wow, we got that first goal. If we can hold on to this, take that back to Philly, that would be great. But no, nah, one's not enough. One's not enough for this team. So Atlanta start pushing forward's number. Jurgen Dam is pushed way high on the right side. And we just kept, our counterattack was so clinical in this game. After we went up 1-0, um, we didn't just completely go into a um, into a defensive posture, just sit back and absorb pressure and all that stuff. Like that's the problem with the Union sometimes. They'll go up a goal or something, and they'll just kind of sit back, especially on the road, absorb pressure, and they'll end up conceding rather than like you know just trying to actually methodically get a second goal and put the thing away. And that's what they did this game. They they didn't sit back completely. They went. They, they pushed numbers forward, too, but at the right time. They defended well. When they won that ball, then you'll see guys like Baizo going up forward. You'll see guys like Montero, Santos, Shobilko taking off, going forward. So, we um, Leon Flock, I think it's on the uh, second goal, plays a great ball into Shobilko, who's in, again, all alone. Well, not all alone, but he's you know near the top of the box, and he just hammers it in. He just freaking... Belts one into the net emphatically past Guzan, who's all like, oh, you know, he's freaking, you know, complaining and yelling at his defense and thinking what the heck's going on. 
But credit Leon Flock for a great ball over there to set up Shobilko, who just hammers in the, the goal. And it's 2 0, and you're thinking, holy crap, like, is this really happening? You know, Casper, the friendly striker, just freaking putting in two goals. He's been fantastic in the Champions League. I think he's got like four goals now in the Champions League. And then they add another one later on. Shobilko involved yet again, setting up. Uh, he, he could have actually scored the hat trick. He was in. And then, you know, Fontana made a good run with him to support him. And as soon as the keeper came out, Shobilko squares it across to Fontana. He's got an easy tap into an empty net. Goes on, you know, raising his hand, thinking, oh, offsides, not even close. There's no offsides in the play anywhere. There was just a desperate attempt to try and stop the goal. And freaking Fontana comes in, and what does he do? He does what he does. He scores goal. He Fontana's not going to wow you with the amazing pass or anything, but when he gets his chances, he finishes them. Anthony Fontana is one of our best finishers on the team, and he's not even a forward, but he... um. He just scores goals. You know, that's what he does. He freaking pops in there at the right time, gets a goal. Big goals, too. So it's 3-0. And Atlanta were still trying to score goals late in the game, getting pressure on. But, you know, they didn't get quite as good quality chances in the second half. And, uh, you know, Union just kept defending well. They kept, you know, winning crosses and winning those second balls and just keeping their cool, defending and, Got out of there with a three nothing win, and uh, going into the second leg, you gotta say it's all Union. There's no way they're gonna blow this. I mean, Atlanta have the talent to come back. Yeah, they have way more talent than the Union do, which makes this a very surprising result. But we're, Union are such a blue collar team. We don't have that superstar guy to go to. We don't have Barco and Martinez and Marcelino Marino and all the guys that they got. Jurgen Dam. They all Union. The uh, Union have all these younger players and lesser-known guys and blue-collar workers like Flock and Bedoya and, you know, Montero and Shabilko. These guys work. The whole team works off the ball, and that's what makes us such a good defensive team. We were the, I think we were the top defensive team last year in MLS, if not one of the top. And um, so far in the Champions League, we haven't even given up a goal in three Champions League games yet. And uh, in two MLS games, we just gave up the two goals to Miami. Um, so just, you know, and that all came in like a short span, those two goals. I'm just so impressed with the Union and the Champions League. The way they're playing, they, you know, they just, they want to win this competition. I mean, I'm happy that they're even as far as they are. The fact that we have a great chance of getting to the semifinals is just insane to me. Credit Jim Curtin for setting his team up and making changes when need be in these games and just uh you know he's he does such an amazing job with this team the fact that they don't have the talent that a lot of teams do the owners aren't spending the money like other owners do in the league you know there's a lot of teams a lot of teams that have way more talent than we do and we outplay a lot of them just by coaching and just sheer determination by the team and the the system that we have and the youngsters that come in and step up year after year now, um, you know, this is our, pretty much our third straight year of being pretty solid team so far. It's great to see this club being a competitive team now after so many bad seasons. You know, we were a doomed franchise since we'd come into the league, and now we're, suddenly we're, you know, a destination for some players, and, you know, young players want to come here, and they know that they're going to play and get the opportunity to play, and it's just great. I wish, still wish we would sign that really good number 10 attacking talent to put us, that would give us a great chance at winning more trophies if we can get that true player that can take over a game, uh, something the Union have never really had. Uh, we need the right guy to come in here. There's there's talks about us getting some Hungarian playmaker, but I don't know if that's going to happen or not. That would be nice. Um, I forget his name. I'd have to, I'd have to look it up. Uh, but our next game, as you can see there in the bottom, next MLS game is May 1st in a couple days against NYCFC. And, um, yeah, we should hopefully perform well against them. I, I don't like NYC. I said that in the, in the last podcast. Hopefully we can beat them at home. we got to get a win in MLS. We're off to a slow start in MLS, but we gotta we got to get a win there. But... Anyways, guys, let's go Union. 
Second leg is going to be coming up um, in about a week's time. And I, I expect Fontana to start in there. I don't know who he's going to start with that second leg of the Champions League game. I don't know who he's going to start in this MLS game. I, you know, these starters have pretty much run every game so far in league and uh, Champions League, and they're going to tire out eventually. You know, you got guys like Bedoya is playing like pretty much every minute here, and Glessness and freaking Kai Wagner and Baizo and Blake and you know Montero, Shabilko. All these guys are playing tons of minutes already. You know, it's a little dangerous. But uh, we have a lot of younger guys on the bench, and Elsino's injured right now. Burke's not 100%. So, I don't know. Santos picked up a knock already this season. He's, But he seems to be back to himself a little bit now. Uh, we'll, see how, we'll see how it goes. We shall see how it goes. But it's, it's looking good for us. I just wish we would get something going in the league. This game against the NYCFC at home is big. It's big. We gotta we gotta win this game. We really do. Give us keep that momentum going into that second leg of the Champions League. Keep that confidence up. And that's gonna carry over and you know into the Champions League and in and throughout the next league game as well. So anyways guys. I'm Zero. Thank you so much for listening to the Union Podcast here on my channel. Um, I do appreciate it. Let me know what you think. If you're a Union fan listening to this, even if you're a Atlanta United fan, let me know what's, how frustrated you must be after that first leg. Um, <laughs> I like to even talk to, to opposing teams' fans in a respectful way, you know. I, um, I, I actually don't hate Atlanta like a lot of people do. I've actually enjoyed watching that franchise play games over the past several seasons, so... Um, Joseph Martinez is an absolute beast. I think he's a great player. He just hasn't been himself yet since he's come back from injury, but I'm sure he'll get back to that. Anyways, guys, I'll see y'all in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Go Union. Until next time, zero is the number.